Okay. Yeah, so something about me. I'm a content writer, blogger. I'm also a HOTS instructor. And uh, I have done my MBA from California State University and also from Lucknow. So I have two master's degree. And then I've also worked with Accenture, KPMG, some of the firms, big firms. Then I took a break from the corporate world and now I'm into writing, blogging. So I'm a certified digital content writer. So this is all about me. And um, so yes, uh, I think somebody is waiting here. Okay. So yes, uh, whoever is listening, I would like to welcome all of you. So this is Nimisha Jaiswal. I just told about myself, okay, that I'm a blogger right now and I do some freelance writing as well. Okay, so I'll be sharing you some of the tips which you can take in from here to start your blogging career. So I'll be sharing my screen over here. Let me know if you all can see it. Okay. So I hope everybody can see it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, great. So uh, before that, even I want to know something about from you all, like uh, where do you study? What are your names? And have you ever written your blog ever? So if you're not comfortable in telling, you can just type in the chat window. I can see from there. So if you can, some people, if they can quickly type in there, I can just have a look. Okay, so okay, I think we should start. We are already late. I'll see it later. Okay, so career and blogging, we will be looking into this. I'll be giving you some tips in this. So it's uh, firstly, let us know what is a blog versus article because most of the times uh, people get confused between what is the difference between them. There's a very fine line. And what are the blogging statistics? What are the 10 steps to write the finest blogs, 10 mistakes to avoid, different kinds of blogs which you can write, tips to be a successful blogger, We'll know about some famous Indian bloggers and how to make money through blogs. Okay, so let us continue. Is I hope um, everybody can join. Okay. So blog versus article. So initially it was said that blog must have around 300 to 500 words because the attention span of the audience is very less, it was assumed. But now as the uh, changing times, people have connectivity with internet, even uh, in the remotest of villages, you know? So now they, everybody has time to read big blogs as well. So it has been said that the blog post could be of 1000 to 1200 words also. And the article must have at least 2,000 words. That's the difference here. And uh, here you can see that, if I can move this, yes. So around 40% of the people, they still write about 500 to 700 words. But now it see it has been increased, right, around, um, See, 2,000 to 3,000 words is something which is also preferred nowadays. OK, 
Okay. And 5,000 words also, if you can see 9% even write. Okay, so now the people read more and more blogs. And why the content writing or blog writing or any type of writing is increasing its importance nowadays? It's all because of the Google Panda, then a, a algorithmic update which came up, which said that the low quality content should be removed and a nice content which has a relevance should come up in the search results. And that is why is the demand of a uh, nice content writers or the bloggers. So here is some blogging statistics I'd like to share. So around 70 to 75 percent of internet users read blogs every day. So you can imagine how important this platform is. About 70 million posts are being published each month in WordPress. It has grown by 12 percent. 60 percent of content marketing is based on blogs. And here also it says in this graph itself, it can see the purple color bar the blog says around 76 percent right they are reading blogs so that's the importance of blogging nowadays it's a beautiful platform to express your views your opinions and plus you can earn some money so we will go quickly towards the 10 steps to write the finest blogs so first step is always think of a topic and know your audience. So topic, some examples I've given over here. You can just think of something. If you are not, do not want to write something on politics or on a big, big topics, start something which you can experience in your colleges, right? Something like um, 72 hours in your city, five out outfits to go on a casual date, right, or a day in your life, something general, right, you can start writing something on that. So with gaining experience, you can move to something, uh, important topics, which is prevalent. So for, and also, you have to think about the sector, about the field you want to write in, like whether it is uh, you want to write on uh, travel or music or motivation, yoga, gardening. List is endless, right? Depression nowadays, like in lockdown, many people are facing that issue. Or whether it's some investments, uh, fashion, lifestyle, so many things are there. You can choose the sector in which you want to write in. And on that basis, think of a topic which on which you want to write and also know your audience what is their age what is their gender what is their location what is their culture again why it is important because if you are writing only for um, younger people then uh, you should write something which is related to their age their appropriate age right gender wise again if you want to uh, write um, something on um, for boys, you know, you can start writing on cars, or if it is a gender piece, it's um, for a woman. Again, you can write for a fashion or a lifestyle, something like that. So that is why it is important to know your audience as well. Okay. The second slide says that you have to write a catchy title with relevant keywords to boost the search engine performance, right? So the trick is always use some catchy titles and it should have some relevant keywords in it, okay? Um, because when the people search, right, they just type in the keywords. So that should be in your title. So keep it short. Use some numbers like you can see in many of the blogs and travel blogs, you can see uh, nine breathtaking places to visit or 21 hill stations near Mysore. So you must try to use the numbers. In that way, people can know that, okay, what all they can get if they are reading a blog. So that is a nice way 
you can ask questions like do you know or uh, did you know that so and so happened uh, unique ideas for gifting something like that and here i have given some of the more uh, i found it in pink interest like uh, some ways to skyrocket your business maybe a 10 ways to skyrocket your business right or 15 ways to uh, make a particular dish a yeah, recipe right so it can be anything to uh, the best way to um, do uh, work from home or something like that anything so you can think of any of these topics and try to make it catchy so that people would love to read it write some relevant keywords in that so that it prompts up in the search results and you try to use some numbers or some question marks so it will be more um, search titles so when we talk about keywords we should um, also know about google ads at keyword planner you can um, go into this keyword planner and you can see that um, if you are just typing it like indoor games, right? And get results, then what you can do, so many results come up, right? Indoor games for you, indoor games, building activities, or indoor birthday party games, right? So all these are again keywords that you throw with this for your corporate sector, it's for team building, or it's just the indoor um, for a party. So these are all again catchwords, right? And you can get it from these keyword planner. You can also know that which word is most uh, used, uh, searched, right? Because they will show you the competition level, whether it is low, whether it's medium or whether it's high, which a word is searched the most in the internet. Now on that basis, you can make up your, uh, again, whatever title you are choosing. And again, third and fourth steps are that you have to write a content which is again compatible for the search engine and social media visibility. All it means is some Topics which people are looking for, they are searching for in the internet or social media, that topics, try to write on dot, that topics. Because in that way, the probability that your blog will be read, it increases, right? If um, like, um, it's, a, if it's, a, it's saying that a recession is coming up, right? So you can write something on that or anything about the Indian economy, how it is being affected because of COVID-19, anything which is prevalent, which the people is looking for in social media, try to write something that. Don't try to create uh, something unnatural uh, things and try to post it because people might not be looking for all those things. Focus again on current topics, trending topics, right? Uh, like life after COVID-19 and all that. It's still, uh, although it's been so many uh, months now, still people want to know what will be their life after COVID-19, what will be the job requirements, how will be the economy, how will be the uh, education structure. So many things are coming up. Try to write it on the current trending topic. Sorry, Atmanir uh, Bharat, right? It has also been initiated. So you can do a little bit of research on this and write something on trending which the people are looking for. So talking about social media, so I just kept this slide here to give you more insight about the, how important social media is. You all are youngsters. You all are connected through all of these uh, social media platforms and I hope you all know how important it is. 3.96 billion people around the world, they are connected to social media, okay? And in Facebook, in Facebook, again, there is around 1.6 billion users daily. YouTube, around 500 million videos are being watched every day. In WhatsApp, again, 1 billion active users are there. And so you can see that 
how important the social media is and why do we have to know about social media when we are talking about blogging because when you are just writing and not marketing it nobody will know that what you have written and they will not come to read it so first thing is marketing is very important and social media is a very good platform whatever you write in you can just pass it on to your friends to your huge network make it as much popular as it can so that you know all what we are trying here is to have a lot and lot of traffic to your website the more and more people come to your website to your blog that is how you can make money so the the crux is that you have to attract more and more people so getting back to the points so organize the content in bullet points always do that if you are not writing in bullet points and only in the text format a paragraph after another what happens is the people they just just don't want to read it nobody likes to read a textbook kind of a structure when there is a bullet points people really like to read it that they can know that okay these are the things which are coming up these are the new things which i can know so it gives like kind of a trailer to them that what is expected in that blog so always put bullet points in your blogs try to arouse curiosity in the audience make them curious to read your blog otherwise why would they read your blog there are tons of blogs out there right so try to make it curious for them like i wrote one of these blogs uh, why you should travel in india and i just begin writing some questions that have you seen a tulip garden in srinagar spent some nights camping in the thar desert of jaisalmer a uh, sipped a hot co a cup of coffee in um, uh, tea in munar so what i was doing is trying to arouse the curiosity in the people that if the answer to any of these questions is no then why don't you just step out and do some traveling and when the people read so many things that okay i haven't done so many things okay i should do it so what is happening they are engaging with your blog and if they are engaging with your blog then definitely they will try to read more and more spend time more and more on your blog and that's how you know in um, future you can add some get some ads coming up on your blogs okay so going down okay add some images or infographics to attract attention you should always do that uh because articles with images get 90% more views as opposed to those without no visuals okay so and i hope you all know right you all are reading blogs how many of you read blogs where there is no images just the context just the text format i don't think people do so it's the images which attract the people and nowadays the videos are coming up right so uh bloggers are more bloggers now making their video and uh, putting it on their uh, websites so okay somebody is joining here okay so here i some list i have put it i know you all know it but uh, like pixels free images unsplash pixabay these are again some of the sites where you can get free images try to use them put it in your blogs if you travel somewhere if you go somewhere you can take your own pics and put it that would be more uh, authentic because people really like to read your stories no you want to know about you want to see your pictures the more you make it personal the more the people will get attached with you they will try to follow you and know, want to know you okay and uh, just don't uh, copy paste some of the images um, in the google because many have that copyright issues don't try to get into that so always 
if you are publishing something, make sure that the images are free. So this is about images and infographics. We know that any table, charts, pie charts, anything, uh, which makes the context more uh, in a simpler manner or gives a lot of data uh, in a small uh, picture format. People would really love to know that. You know, reading, instead of reading a big, big paragraphs, they always want to read something which is in a nutshell. So infographics is something very much used, try to use that. Add a call to action, right? Um, if you're um, writing something, right? You can um, just put, these are called call to action, like learn more, sign up, use app, download, subscribe. I know you have heard of all these, book now. Try to use some call of actions over there. If you are selling something, right, if you are selling, say, a jewelry or something, try to write a blog on a jewelry. Give a link at the bottom that, okay, uh, this is the link where you can go and shop. So put that a call to action, that click here, you know, learn more, something, anything, what you are doing and any call to action which is relevant and related to your blogs, you can always use that. In that way, people will come more and that is, these are some of the ways where you can get their email IDs, right? Because if they just come in over there, you can ask for their email IDs. So this is one of the methods to capture more and more email IDs, which you can use it further. Oh, somebody is coming here. Okay. So in your uh, future, right? to market your blogs, okay? So add emotions and try to engage the audience again. Try to engage again. We are saying this again and again because this is something really important, okay? So I wrote once uh, about the Bandhavgarh National Park. It was again for air cruise aviation, I wrote it. So here what I'm saying, it is home to the highest number of Royal Bengal Tigers found in the world. Something to feel proud of, isn't it? So what I'm trying, I'm trying to interact with the audience, trying to have a conversation with the audience. So have some conversation with them in your writing too. So in that way, people will be engaged, they will read, they will know that, okay, somebody is like talking to me, giving me some more information. So try to make it personal. And one more example here is like 81 amazing facts that will change the way you see the world. Now you see how important this title is. It has 81 number, some facts, something which is arousing your curiosity and what they are telling you. Do you wish to know the weird fact on how you could literally go out with a bang after your death or about a tree planting tradition, celebrating new one, newborn baby girls. So try to use more and more words of you. Do you wish to know? Do you uh, want to know where you could find a real diamond, right? To broaden your knowledge about the world, uh, Bodh Panda has put some amazing facts, which uh, you probably didn't know. So try to use more of the words you, you, you. So in that way, again, you are engaging with the audience. It means you are giving something information which is not uh, from a Wikipedia or from a, or a documentary kind of a thing. Try to engage with them. Again, this is one of the example I wanted to tell because there should be some text links in the content, right? So uh, like the backlinks, which we uh, have commonly heard of, right? Or forward links, outbound links on that. So, oh, I'm sorry, I just, okay. So here's, uh, it's the jewelry brand here, Gehna. They wrote a blog on it and they gave some uh, links towards the shopping place, right? That if you click over here, you can direct, uh, directly go to a site where you can do the shopping. So this is one of the ways to take the audience to the platform where they can really buy some stuff. 
So if you are selling something, you can obviously do this. If you are not selling something, you can give some links about your friends who are selling something in that way. You know, they will get benefit because people will be going to their um, um, site as well. So this is again, uh, it's a mutual thing, right? People going there will come back to you and people coming on your blog will be going back to them. So this is uh, adding the back links, the outbound links or the inward links, which is coming back to you. These are very important to have in a blog to make your blog more popular. So once we are done about how to write your blog, just take, see what mistakes we should avoid in a blog. So avoid repetition of keywords, okay? Like um, I've given examples here, exercise build stamina in young children, exercise build stamina, uh, stamina in teenagers, exercise build stamina in older adults, in senior citizens. So again, we are repeating one word again and again and again. So don't try to do that. That's um, something you should avoid. Avoid long paragraphs, make it short, around 100 to 120 words. Avoid long sentences, just 10 to 15 words is enough. Avoid pl plagiarism. We all know that copy paste is a serious crime, should not do that. Avoid any abusive language or slangs, which we generally use, right? Um, Chillax or swag or something which we uh, commonly use while interacting, but don't write it when you are writing something professionally. Avoid hurting people's sentiments, avoid being negative, avoid grammar mistakes, and avoid passive voice, avoid unrealistic or imaginary topics, right? Every time that I'm saying try to write on the current trending topics, not, not something which is unrealistic or you're writing something on aliens or something like that, which people may not be interested to read about it, okay? So once we know how to write a blog, we know how to avoid some of the mistakes writing in a blog, let's move forward to different kinds of blogs. So I know you all must have read or been reading a lot of blogs, right? So there are see around 6% of personal blogs have been written, 16% is business blogs, 9% is promotional blogs. And so we will just, in a nutshell, we'll see what are the different kinds of blogs you can write. So this is motivational, meditation, and travel. So again, in motivational, you can follow Robin Sharma. Right? You might have studied most of his books, famous uh, books, right? So in this, you can see many of the blogs we write and nowadays we put the podcast over there where you can just hear what he's trying to say. This is again a new pattern, a new way to connect more of the people. Mind Valley is again one a nice site you can check out. You can read more about um, work, performance, mind, body, all those stuff. Uh, Tiny Buddha is one of it. If you want to read about uh, meditation, so mind works, the meditation blog, dharmaseed.org. So you can check out some of these blogs if you are interested to write in motivational or on meditational topics. So it's all about you and which topic you want to write it. And how will you know that on one and what topic you want to write unless you don't read different kinds of blogs. The more you read, the more you will come to know that, okay, this is something I'm liking it. This is something I have experience in it. This is something where I can put some more uh, comments on it. And then you can think of writing on it. Many people who love traveling can write on travel blogs. It will be on Thrillophilia stories. You can find on uh, Travel Triangle, Tree Bow. You know, you can find tons of blogs over there. Follow them, read them. If you find it that this is something exciting to you, you can become a travel blogger. But again, we say every time that if you want to be a blogger, you have to read more and more. The more you read, the more you get some clues and you can carry on. 
So this is again about the food, about the lifestyle, about the fashion. There's so many topics we can write on, right? So if you want to follow any food bloggers, just type in food bloggers, you will get a list. Try to follow any of them, right? Uma Raghuraman, uh, Deepa Rajpal, anyone, try to follow them. See what they are writing, how they are writing, what is their writing styles. And you can, if you have interest in it, you can take up that. Top uh, fashion bloggers, search for them, right? Uh, Tanya Dhar, she's one of the uh, lifestyle blogger from Bangalore, right? So again, you can follow her if you want to be a lifestyle blogger, right? And track.in, yourstory.com, thebetterindia.com. These are some of the sites where you can get topics on current uh, topics, right? So if you want to write something on current topics, uh, these are some of the sites you can go through. You can get tons of information and you can use it in your blogs right current topics i have listed some of them you can just go through them and you all know i know uh, being mba students uh, you must be uh, doing this already right so this is that i just wanted to give a little bit of hint that where you can go and look out for some things so um, yes again being mba students you must be knowing mbauniverse.com uh, Bloomberg, Entrepreneur, um, right? So, uh, yeah. who can forget about the HBR, right? The Harvard uh, Business Review. So, all these things, you know, you can just go through it and you can see, you will find tons of topics over there, like about the gig economy, the 15 tri 5 trillion economy, right? The coronavirus, make in India, startup India, tons of topics you can find here. This in mbauniverse.com. Try to read again, and you will know, you will get a lot of hint what to write on. So I don't want to stretch this further because I know this is something you all must be knowing it before. Anyone who wants to explore new sites, so I mentioned some of them over there. Now, where should you start your blog? which plot, platform which uh, we should be using. So wordpress.com is something free. It has around 37 million sites over there. So this is something which is most preferred. Uh, I think there was a um, infographic before also which shows that WordPress is the most commonly used platform for blogging. So you can start that. Or you can try Wix also, it is also free, it is also booming nowadays, you can explore over there as well. So again, uh, how to create your WordPress blog, again, just go to the site, right, start your blog, they will ask for a name, you give your name, All right? I gave like naturetalk.com. If it is already taken, they will let you know, and they will give you some suggestions, and if something is free, you can just take it over. Your page will be created. And then you can just get started. What you have to do is just type in something, whatever you feel like, and publish. That's it. Your blog will be live. So it's all about it. You don't have to do a lot of things. Yes, if you want to make it trendy, and there are a lot of other things you can do in there so that you can again check it out to make it more beautiful. So tips to be a successful blogger. Again, um, some of the steps we uh, understood, right? How to write a blog, but how you want to be like successful blogger. So again, try to do some networking with some other bloggers, like what they are writing. Um, what is their writing styles? Try to know that. Write some guest blogs, right? Get backlinks to your website. In this way, you'll become more popular. Use social media to connect with the masses. We already discussed the importance of social media. Try to use more of um, hashtags. In that way, uh, you know, your blog will be more visible. Right, like uh, recently I wrote on NEP, 
uh, that is national education policy so i just gave the hashtags and many people who didn't knew me also they just came and read my blog so hashtags are really important so try to use that uh, connect with journalists who make you popular here i'm not talking about the uh, big big journalists i'm talking about the local journalists right in your um, area the local ones right if they have some local website or um, local magazine or something where your uh, write-up can be published you try to use that also just to make you more popular okay. monetize your blog again we'll read more on this that how you can do it choose topic and headlines that attract eyeballs that also we discussed so this is something you should follow to be a um, successful blogger here i gave um, some of the examples like uh, michelle gardner like he she was also an mba in finance and then she started blogging like making sense of sense right and she's now making around hundred thousand dollars per month so i'm not saying that if you start writing blogs you can make so much of money but what you can do is that this is inspiring you that even you know uh, being an mba also you can just explore this is something which you can do maybe not as a full time then as a part time also this is something which you can take up because many mbas are doing these uh, so here this is again uh, robert farrington right he started the blog the college investor right here again he started doing a blogging and again he's also one of the famous blogger so why a blog gets you further than an mba if you really want to know this try to read this article in entrepreneur.com and this is the link here and the slash article slash 293233 type try to read this article it's a wonderful article which tells you that uh, being an mba whether you should be a blogger how blogging being an mba will be helpful what are the pros and cons right so you will know everything uh, related to mba and blogging and i think the mbas can be the best bloggers because again blogging is more about marketing and since in mbas we know how to market right we study marketing and so this is something uh, you should go through so you will get more insight okay. moving on so i have listed some of the indian bloggers because um, you know you, everybody wants to know who are the top indian bloggers right so try to follow shoutmeloud.com harsh agarwal yourstory.com shraddha sharma you know these are some of the blogs which are being read quite often okay if you want to do, know about food like veg recipes of india.com try to follow her digitaldeepak.com again if you want to know more about online marketing if you want to know about travel the shootingstar.com and for um, the bollywood and all that you all know that pink villa and all that so these are some of the people who write right so they are famous indian bloggers you can follow as per your choices to know more about their writing styles what they write how they write and whether um, you want to be one of them okay and uh, also i in put up the slide just to make sure that be confident that you can still write don't think that you need a um, literature degree or a journalism degree only then you can be a blogger there are tons of bloggers who, are, who might be engineers or a ca or any any many professions you know many housewives you know so many people they just come up then they start writing and it can be a career here is like uh, rohitprabhakar.com he is also an mba from symbiosis institute of management studies and right? he also writes chandu.org is again an mba from iim indore 
he uh, makes a lot of videos regarding Excel and Power BI. So you can check out some of these and there are tons of others. So you can explore more to know that there are many Indian bloggers who are being successful. So the last part and the most important part, how to make money through blogs. Everybody wants to know that. So the first is guest blogging. In guest blogging, what you do, you write a particular blog, right? On someone other's site, promoting their products, their services, right? And meanwhile, at the end, you can give the backlink to your website. So what you're doing, you're promoting them. And when the customers, they come back to your site, you know, so they will know more about you. So in that way, you are helping them also and you are getting new customers back to your site as well. So guest blogging is something very popular to make yourself popular. Affiliate marketing, again, you have to write a blog. Um, think of some products on which you want to write, write on it and give the links, the online links where they can purchase those products and on the basis you can get some commission out of it. So Amazon Associates, Amazon's affiliate marketing program, this is again, um, many people have joined it. You have to just sign up, start recommending some products in your site, in through your blogs, right? And you can just earn a commission out of it. it. I think it's 10% to something. Right. So this is something you can check out. And these are again some of the sites you can check out if you really want to know how to make money. Like Quick Sprout, Shout Me Loud. Try to follow some of these sites where you can know that how can you make your blogging popular? How can you um, earn money out of it? everything. So in Google AdSense, you can also use it's one of the method, you know, to make money. When the ads, they pop up, it comes up on your site, on your blog. That's how also you can make money. But uh, per thousand views in India, you can make somewhere between 0.5 to $2, depending on your niche, like what are you writing on? Because some are popular and some are not right? so again if you want to earn a lot through google adsense you have to have a lot of hits a lot of clicks to your blog it should be in the hundreds and thousands and then you will make some significant amount of money so the best way is to try to make it popular among your um, um, family friends and whatever network you have so that way you slowly, slowly can go up. And uh, this uh, guy is Neil Patel, and uh, he's one of the famous online digital marketer. If you really want to know that, how can you make money out of, out of it? Try to follow him. He will give you a lot of ideas. So I've put uh, just a small video over here. So let's hear from himself, what he's trying to say here. You have a blog, you have traffic, but you're not making any money. What should you do? Hey everyone, I'm Neil Patel, and today I'm going to share with you five ways you can monetize your blog. So let's start off with the easiest one. Number one, AdSense. It's something that Google provides, and it allows you to put ads on your site. People put AdSense on their site, you put it throughout your text, your sidebar, every time they click on it you will make money. Number two, affiliate programs. Affiliate programs is where you promote a product or service and you get paid every time you drive a sale. There's a lot of networks out there that have affiliate offers such as ClickBank or JVZoo. You can go there to sign up for offers, promote them on your blog, and you'll get paid every time you drive a sale. Number three, sell digital products. From eBooks to courses, there's an infinite amount of possibilities with digital products. You can even use. Oh, sorry, I just. Sorry, I just pressed something. You have a blog. 
you have traffic. Quick packs, your sidebar, every time they click on it, you will make money. Number two, affiliate programs. Affiliate programs is where you promote a product or service and you get paid every time you drive a sale. There's a lot of networks out there that have affiliate offers, such as QuickBank or JVZoo. You can go there to sign up for offers, promote them on your blog, and you'll get paid every time you drive a sale. Number three, sell digital products. From eBooks to courses, there's an infinite amount of possibilities with digital products. You can even use a service called Kajabi to give and deliver your digital products to the people who buy it. Now, when you're selling digital products, the best way to do it is typically through a webinar. Have people go to your site, register for a webinar, watch, and then some of them will end up buying or becoming leads or customers for your digital products. Number four, sell your own ad space. AdSense, which is owned by Google, is the middleman. If you don't want to have a middleman, you can go directly to the people that should be advertising and get them to buy ads. Sure, most people are going to say no, but that's okay. If you hit enough people up, someone will buy an ad spot. That way you can keep that middleman fee and you'll make more money. Number five, sell physical products. A good example of this is Legion Athletics. They have a blog all about fitness and they sell physical products protein, supplements, vitamins, and you know what? They do millions and millions of dollars a year. They do over 10 million a year, literally over 10 million a year because of their blog traffic. It's super effective as long as you're creating amazing product that people want to buy. Use those five methods and you'll be able to monetize your blog. If you want, you can use multiple of them. Some people do ads and they sell digital products. Some people sell digital products and physical at the same time. It's up to you on what you want to do. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing all five because it's just overwhelming for visitors, but you can pick one or two. And if you want to go to the extreme, you can pick three of those methods and use them all at once. Okay. So he was Neil Patel. You can follow in neilpatel.com also. He will give you lots of other hints how to make monetize your blog. So again, content writing. We discussed all about blogging, but blogging is just a part of content writing. So content writing includes everything, writing newsletter, press releases, advertisements, white papers, research papers, anything, landing pages, so many things, right? So you can look out for some content writing, the freelance work, and these are some of the sites I have listed here. Fever, Upwork, Freelancer, Rocker Stop. These are some of the sites you can go and look out for some freelance work. And you can get paid for writing and uh, you can earn around eight to ten thousand per month and experienced people can earn around twenty to twenty five thousand so this is the minimum they have put in because again everything depends on your experience on your exposure right? so but if you are really very new and you just want to explore you just want to write and see that whether a writing is your cup of tea whether you enjoy it so you can enjoy uh, you can um, join air cruise aviation so they also offer internship for content writing and you will get a nice platform to write share it and you will get the feedback on your writing. So this is something also you can check out. You can go to Internshala. They offer some of content writing internships as well. And uh, some of the content writers, bloggers, uh, groups are there in Facebook. You can join them, right? And uh, some works keep on coming over there. You can just take up and write. So this is all about blog writing and how you can make your career in blog writing so i leave you with a quote start writing no matter what the water does not flow until the faucet is turned on so start writing and as you start writing you will come to know whether you're a good writer whether you can write how can you monetize and slowly the steps will follow up okay so thank you so much for being a lovely audience and I thanks April.
amazing for having me here, for giving me a platform, and to give up my views, opinion on writing. Thank you, Shekhaji, again, for trusting me. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nimisha. Just a minute uh, for uh, Navni. Navni? Uh, thank you. Last but not the least, we'd like to propose a hearty word of thanks to you, Ms. Nimisha, for gracing today's webinar and delivering the important topic of career in blogging. I'm sure that all the participants have taken the note of your suggestions and will initiate shortly in the future. And lastly, we thank you again on the behalf of whole Aircrew Aviation mm -hmm. Private Limited team. Thank you, Nimisha. Thank you so much. Thank you.